After long, patient pressure by the Daily Skeptic, the Met has started to withdraw fabricated temperature data. It has? Uh, I mean, it has. Fabricated as in, invent something in order to deceive. False data, invented or produced in order to deceive someone. This requires an investigation. But let's backtrack a minute. I was led to this video by a poster who told me I would benefit from watching a decent channel on climate. I thought that might be a scientific institute or a university or some kind of climate science professional. But he referred me to this channel run by someone called Dr. Robson. Now, don't get excited. It turns out he's a doctor of history. And in fact, I've debunked his channel before when someone cited it as evidence that Arctic ice is growing. A conclusion which I quickly discovered was due to an elementary mistake in graph reading on the part of the doctor. So now he's being touted as a shining example of good climate science. I can't wait to find out why. I asked the poster to cite a Dr. Robson the Historian video he was particularly impressed with, and I said I bet I can find a howling error in the first few minutes. So he did, and I did. In fact, it only took 39 seconds. It would have been even faster if Robson hadn't filled the first 30 seconds thanking his subscribers in Greece. Then, at 39 seconds in, he said this. In pressure by the Daily Skeptic, the Met has started to withdraw fabricated temperature data, namely local daily temperature records from non-existent weather stations. So, where did Robson get the idea that the Met Office fabricated temperature data? Of course, he cites a blog, but he didn't investigate any further. Neither did any of the dozens of other bloggers who simply repeated the claim in the echo chamber of the blogosphere. So, let's follow the trail. The blog Robson copied from copied it from another blog, which ran a piece by someone called Ray Sanders. Sorry, not that Ray Sanders. Not that Ray Sanders either. Oh, there he is, this Ray Sanders. Anyway, this Ray Sanders is the original source for the story. He wrote a blog giving his theory about a conspiracy by Met Office scientists. And I have no hesitation in calling this a conspiracy theory because it's a theory that there's been a conspiracy. He claims they got together and invented made-up temperature data from a non-existent weather station that had been closed for 14 years, all the while pretending it was still open and still collecting data. Which, I agree, is totally unethical, unscientific and deceitful. Except, as you probably guessed, <laughs> that isn't what happened. The site at Lowestoft was closed down because a housing estate was going to be built there, so nothing nefarious about that. And the first question is, did the Met Office try to hide this fact? The station was listed as closed on the Met Office website, and the fact that it was closed would have been shown on the data page too, although Sanders doesn't want to show us what that looked like before it was revised. The only place it was shown as open was an accompanying map where the colour hadn't been changed from red to blue to reflect the fact that it was now closed. Probably an oversight, which has since been corrected, but if you prefer the conspiracy theory, the label was cunningly left red in an attempt to deceive everyone into thinking the station was open. The trouble with that conspiracy theory is that even Sanders accepts that the Met Office website shows the station as closed on its closed stations list. And when he emailed the Met Office for clarification, they confirmed that the site was closed. Not a great deception strategy then. OK, the closure of the site may not have been a deception, but data was still coming from a closed station, so that means the data must have been fabricated, right? Or, as Sanders puts it, when does data cease to actually be data and become better described as fabrication? Well, the answer, as every dictionary will tell you, is when the data have been invented, made up, in order to deceive. Fabricate means to invent something, right? Something that is not based on truth in order to deceive someone. On the other hand, figures that have been calculated and measured either directly or by inference are called data. Doesn't Sanders own a dictionary? An example of a fabrication would be if the mayor of Pisa phoned his new chief engineer, asking him to measure the current height of the observation deck on the Leaning Tower of Pisa. 
If all his measuring equipment was broken and the engineer just invented a number... Uh, 39.74 metres, Senor Sindaco. That would be an example of fabrication, something made up with the purpose to deceive. Thing is, after emailing the Met Office, Sanders's own conclusion is that they calculated the temperature at Lowestoft based on other weather stations nearby. So... That's not an invention. It's what's called an inferred measurement, and it's more common in science than you might think. Even the temperature of the troposphere measured by satellites, so beloved of climate conspiracy theorists, because they think it disproves global warming, is inferred data. Satellites don't measure the temperature of the troposphere directly. They infer it from a measurement of heat radiation. If we go back to the example of the Tower of Pisa, if the chief engineer didn't have any measuring equipment, he could have inferred the height of the observation deck by dropping a weight from it dozens of times and seeing how long it took to hit the ground each time. An inferred measurement is an estimate with a quantified margin of error, so you can certainly question whether the figure is accurate if you can show that the calculation or the methodology are wrong, but you can't change the English language to suit your belief. The only criticism I would have, and this does lend itself to deceit, is that the Met Office should have made it clear that these figures from Lowestoft were estimates. Oh, wait, they did! They explain that's what the asterisk means, and even Sanders acknowledges that these are marked as estimates, distinguishing them from actual measurements. By the way, if you want to join the fight against scientific misinformation on the internet, please like and subscribe. Why not do it now, while I show you this picture of a fluffy kitten? So, how's the conspiracy theory bearing up? The Met Office publicly stated that the Lowestoft station was closed, as Sanders admits, so no conspiracy to hide that fact. The Met Office stated that the data shown were estimates, and Sanders agrees, so no pretense that these were actual measurements. And Sanders also accepts that the figures were calculated from real measurements, which means not fabricated. Up till now, this entire conspiracy theory hinges on just one thing, the colour of a tag on a map that contradicted the Met Office list of closed stations. But Sanders has one more ace up his sleeve. He claims the estimates are completely wrong. And this is where it gets good, because Sanders has no idea how the Met Office made their calculations. So he comes up with a method so inanely stupid, it's bound to be wrong. And then he assumes that has to be the method the Met Office used, and that's how he draws his conclusion that the Lowestoft data must be wrong. Sanders's bogus method starts with the Met Office telling him that its Lowestoft data were inferred from other stations that were well correlated. Now, to you and me and the whole scientific world past fifth grade, well correlated means that the trend of two or more sets of data pretty well match. The trends follow one another reasonably well, but Sanders thinks well correlated means two or more sets of data have to be the same. If conspiracy theorists are already protesting that Sanders can't be that dumb, I give you Exhibit A. Sanders said Charlesfield Weather Station, 29 miles inland, can't be well correlated because it can't replicate coastal weather characteristics. So he thinks a good correlation means one site has to replicate the conditions at the other. But that's obvious nonsense, as we're going to see. Exhibit B, Sanders says stations at Hemsby, Coltishall, Skoll, Morley St. Botolph and Wattisham can hardly be considered well correlated, not just because three of them have closed, but because of their distances from Lowestoft. Of course, there's no reason at all why two sites 40 miles apart can't have a very good correlation. They don't need to always have the same temperature, just a similar temperature trend. Here, for example, are average monthly temperatures at Hearn and Yeovilton for the year 2000, and they give a very good correlation, even though one is on the coast and the other is inland, 38 miles away. Neither replicates the other or has the same temperatures. They're well correlated because they follow the same trend, with Yeovilton nearly always a bit cooler. Here's the correlation the following year, and if you keep doing this for daily temperatures, not monthly, over a 20-year period for several sites, then you get thousands of data points and a very accurate picture of the differences between one site and another. 
But not understanding what a good correlation means is just Sanders's first mistake. His second mistake was to assume that maybe the Met Office calculated its Lowestoft temperatures by taking an average of the well-correlated sites. And we can all agree that none of these sites will have the same temperatures as Lowestoft. The correlated sites may all be at a higher elevation or on a higher latitude, making them consistently cooler. Using a hypothetical example, just for illustration, if you have missing data from station A and estimate the missing data by taking an average of the other well-correlated but cooler stations, this is what you get. So I challenge conspiracy theorists to find a better, more accurate method than the one Sanders came up with. How would you calculate the missing data? Any ideas? And now, as everybody knows, I'm no genius, but wouldn't the better way be to take an average of the differences between station A and the others and continue the curve by applying those differences? The result would look something like this. That method doesn't seem to have occurred to Sanders. Instead, he has just one more option, and this is even more absurd than his first one. Sanders claims, without any evidence at all, that many of the well-correlated sites are closed or non-existent. Now, leaving aside the fact that Sanders admits he doesn't know which sites the Met Office used, and therefore this fact has been made up, fifth-grade math alone ought to tell him that correlation only occurs when you have two or more sets of data. If one set of data goes missing, you can estimate it based on a known correlation, but you can't estimate anything if all the data is missing. Isn't that obvious? Either Sanders doesn't see how absurd his ideas are, or he's deliberately made up these absurd methods to make people believe that's the Met Office's only options. Gee, what do we call it when someone makes something up in order to deceive? Did people believe him? Well, of course they did. The original poster believed him because, well, taking an average of stations with different or non-existent temperatures is inaccurate and deceptive. It never occurred to him that maybe meteorologists with PhDs use a better method than something that would get an F in fifth grade science. And, of course, all the bloggers believed him without question, as did Robson. The bottom line is that Sanders can't produce a shred of evidence that the Met Office fabricated the figures, and the closure of the stations wasn't hidden. So where's the deceit? Even Sanders doesn't know. He simply tells his audience he believes there are only two sites that he thinks could possibly be well correlated without understanding what well correlated means. The best he can come up with is this weak argument. How do we know the data wasn't made up? which in the conspiracy theory world quickly becomes the data were made up. But here's what I found particularly disturbing when I explained all this to the original poster who told me I could learn about climate from Robson's channel. In light of all that misinformation, I asked, what is it I can learn? Well, he said, Robson's right most of the time. Otherwise, you wouldn't pick out one point of contention in this or that video. <laughs> Wait, hang on, I didn't pick the video. I asked the poster to cite a Robson video he was particularly impressed with, and I said I bet I could find a howling error in the first few minutes. And this was the video he chose, and it only took me 39 seconds. But never mind this moving of the goalposts, why is a YouTube channel a good source of information as long as it gets things right most of the time, which means it could be getting up to half of its facts wrong? It isn't misleading people, the poster responded, if you do it in good faith, which is the opposite of having solid evidence. So for clarification, he said that means an honest belief or purpose. In the case of the Met Office data, he says it would not be incorrect to claim them as fabrications, a double negative which means it would be correct to claim them as fabrications if the claimant believes deceit was intended. So I can show all the evidence I want, but as long as Sanders believes it's a fabrication, then it is. This can now be repeated as a fact. These bloggers aren't misleading anyone as long as they honestly and in good faith believe what Sanders said. It's a kind of religious approach to science. That doesn't mean it's true. Uh, well, it's true for me. 
You see, I, I believe... You mean true for you is different from true for anybody else? I think this is a revealing insight, because this poster isn't a nutcase. He seems perfectly reasonable, and we had an interesting discussion. But perhaps, worryingly, he represents the new post-truth generation. Getting stuff wrong is normal, because how can anyone possibly be expected to check facts and get things right? And even when they do get something wrong, it's correct as long as they believe it. It's hard to imagine how universities would function if lecturers got 49% of their facts wrong and were allowed to mislead students as long as the lecturer believed in what he was saying. This is what we're up against, folks, faced with a blizzard of fraud accusations based on nothing more than how do we know they haven't falsified the data, the Met Office decided to take down the lowest of temperature estimates from its website. I'm sure they're still collecting them because Lowestoft has a century of temperature data that's far too valuable to simply throw away. It's a shame the rest of us no longer have access because a bunch of amateurs howled in protest based on nothing more than belief, speculation and ignorance. This is why we can't have nice things. And don't forget the charity which I ask you to support in lieu of a Patreon account. It's an innovative scheme that trades healthcare for preserving rainforests, resulting in a huge reduction in deforestation and an increase in health. Details are in the video description, as always.